We had so much fun in Miami, we had curfew. Is that not common? Uh, it's up, oh, bro. Is this heat culture that we don't know about? <laughs> we aren't that curfew. We aren't that curfew. But can you just paint the picture of a room that you walked into where you no, saw no. Shaq no, and no. you went, this is ridiculous. No. Shaq. Shaq. Shaq has bars. Yeah, he can spit. Money got so much to do Making chicken like Zaxby's. My safe stay on stack me. I take off no taxi. Till you actually see three or four more of these, please don't at me. Go, go and check my rap sheet. Platinum what they plaque me. From scoreboard to the billboard. I'm a factor. Phenomenal. Phenomenal. Thank you. Do I call you Shaq now or DJ Diesel? Which personality are you in right well, now? Well, I'm Shaq now. That was a, a DJ Diesel up there. What would you? What is the difference? The difference is it's like being on the court. I, I do that because the, the the reaction from the fans is the similar adrenaline rush of a playoff game. So, like, I do clubs and that, but that's not really who DJ Diesel is. You need to come to one of my festivals. Festival. Matter of fact, for those who don't know who DJ Diesel is, check this footage out. Man, when you were bouncing with those white kids, that was unbelievable. Thank you, brother. Yeah. I felt I felt really good. You love oh, for everyone out there that doesn't know, Shaq loves a few things about me, and one of them is my white guy voice. Yes, I do. It's one of your top. I sound like a great white guy. Me and you went viral a couple of times. <laughs> uh, that's what was, you, you sing the lyrics to your song, and it looks like you're making it up then, even though you're the one that sang them. Thank you. Um, this is our New Year's episode, and uh, we, we talked about this, but what has your New Year's resolu resolutions been in the past, and do you have any this year? The ones in the past are just be able to continue to work, take care of family, and stay out of trouble. Mm. It's always been a big, big one for me. Stay out of trouble. What would a New Year's resolution be for DJ Diesel? Just to continue to move the crowd, continue to just have fun. I, I lose money, DJ. Do you really? Yeah, because I'm, I'm not in the top tiers yet. Like some, some top DJ make a half a million a show. I'm close, but let's just say it's a show I want to do. It's going to be like 30,000 people at a festival. Their budget may only be 50000 but it's something I want to do. I want to rock the crowd. I want to try out some new stuff. Cost me sixty to get there. I want to, I want to put this out into the universe. 2024, is there a venue or a concert that, if you did, would feel big for you? I would like to, I don't know the correct terminology. What's the, the spear? Oh, the sphere. Yeah, I would like to be the first uh, dubstep DJ to play in, in a sphere. A Shack Festival inside the Spear, like that'd be big. Like I've, I've, I've done not play, like Coachella or anything like. No, that. I've, 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 I've done a lot of Palooza. I've done Lost Lands. I've, I've done all the big stuff. Like the little ones are the ones that really go crazy. The ones like ten, thirty thousand. But yeah, I've, I've done mostly all, all the big ones. But if I can headline something, I would love to headline the Spear. If you're listening, Sphere Management. Shaq wants to headline, and we will blow it out. Blow it out. We'll do the big podcast there right beforehand. We will. We'll have a, a Shaq festival. Blow it out. My New Year's resolution for the 20th straight year is get abs. Get abs? Yeah. just one. I'm not going to do the spray paint ones that you did that time. Hold on. Did you just challenge me? Ab off? Ab off. When's your birthday? March 6th. Okay. I'll try. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a battle. No, that's a bad idea. It's a battle. I'm down. Let me help you. Okay. Ready? 
One, stop worrying about it. Two, eat what you want for breakfast. Like I look at everything like gas. Yeah, so that that'll that'll fill you up. Now, the second meal, healthy. Salad. Third meal, chicken or fish. Fourth meal, maybe a shake. If you can do that, you'll start to see them. See, I you, worry that you compared you that to cheat. filling up a tank with gas, and I know. No, so like the reason why I say eat what you want for breakfast is because that's going to expand your stomach. And then when you start to get hungry again, don't put more junk in. See, start what I don't like, healthy. Producer Shane, is that he challenged me to an ab off, and I'm, then he told me what to do, which I think is trying to – he just no. told me to eat four meals and eat whatever I want for breakfast. No, bro, I'm – if we're battling, okay, so, I'm going to keep it serious. Okay, so if you want to be a foo-foo -fu salad eater, you go ahead. I, I like to eat what I want for breakfast and then second, third, fourth, fifth, and sixth meal. I like That's how I lost all this weight. Okay. You look great. Thank you. Uh, and now we're going to welcome in Udonis Haslam. It is time for another edition of the Big Podcast Shack, where we always do it big. And I'm here with the biggest fella that's ever lived, Shaquille O'Neal, a.k.a. DJ Diesel. You know I didn't like you at first. <laughs> Damn. No, I didn't. Tell but, the story. But let me tell you why. I'm big on respect. Mm. And you earn my respect. I'm not going to put you in the class with Ernie, but you're in the same fraternity. Okay. Like, you come, you don't fuck around. You Never. work. No, no, like, when, like, you know, like when you see somebody on TV, like, he think he cool. You are cool, by the way, but when we start doing our work together, how when I try to come in and clown around, you're like, hey, man, wait. Like, that's that's big with me. So when I was looking for somebody to be my partner, not not a host, be my partner, I thought of you. Shout out to all my other partners. I miss They're you great. guys. John Kincaid, Nichelle, love you guys. I think bro. I know the moment where you changed. And yeah. by the way, we have uh, Udonis yes. Haslam yes. here who's going into the Ring of Honor of Miami. We'll get to you in a second, but this is big. Hold on. Right. What, what does that mean? What? They better they better retire your damn jersey. Oh, I mean, we get into that big dog. No. Nah. We get into that big fella. Ring of, okay, see? See? Yeah. We get into see? that. I think I know the moment, though, that you looked at me different was we had Aaron Gordon... We were doing an interview, and he was looking like maybe he had enjoyed himself that day. Oh, yeah. And you said, man, when you dunk, you get so high. And you looked at me, and I was like, okay. And then I was like, man, you're going to go smoke the competition. And Shaq looked at me with this eye where he was like, I see you. Yes, and then from yeah. then on, I felt like we were good. Yeah, I'm like, I'm like, I'm like, he's one of us. I found him. He's yeah, one so I, like, I like this conversation. So you know how I always shout my teammates out, right? Okay. Of course, it's D-Wade, this and that. He's the reason I got number four. Really? This guy right here is the reason I got number four. One, his hard work, his dedication, his lowliness, and we all know he's an enforcer, right? He enforced me not to whoop some ass on that team. I'll <laughs> let him tell the story. You <clears throat> stopped him. Yes, I did. A lot of times. Teammates or other people? A, 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 a couple a people. A lot of people. So a couple a, times. A lot of people. Put myself on. in danger and, my, and put hold myself on, in I'm harm's a, way. Hold on. I'm going to start one story off. I'm going to let him finish it. So a rookie was talking smack to me in the shower, and I'm getting ready to go off. And you dude was like, Shaq, I love you and respect you. I ain't going to let you fight this rookie. But if y'all start fighting, I ain't about to break this shit up, man. Y'all in this motherfucker butt-ass nigga. This man want to fight in the shower. Like, he was that bad that he wanted to assault somebody in the shower. And me being there. I thought that was a safe space. Yeah, but I'm the connector and I protect her. But that's just an awkward time to connect or protect anybody. So I ain't, no <laughs> I ain't want no parts of that. I ain't want no parts of that. And then on the court, I'm sure there was a few, too. Well, no, he was he was the guy that when they used to touch me up, he's always whispering, "Hey, big fella, you want me to get him?" Like, nah, just just wait, just wait. So he was definitely the force. I knew my role. Mm. Yeah, I knew my role. I, I saw the clip well. when y'all was when, when you talked about what's the guy from Indiana that I filed. Uh, just oh yeah, yeah. Um, um, was it Hansborough? Hansborough? Yeah, Hansborough. Yeah, Hansborough. yeah. So, in the so like when you talked about that clip, and this is the clip right here. Show it, producer Shaq. So when, when you talked about that. Like, and you'll start to feel this. All we have is our stories. Yeah. Like, I've been gone from the game for 12, 13 years. You see this right here? I can come down here, me and my cousin King, look at this and, and try to picture the story. So when, when you start talking about that, that brought back memories. Yeah, I mean, you know how it go, big fella, man. You're in the playoffs. It's, it's 
alpha male, you know what I'm saying, mono a mono, I think no matter what the scheme is, everything's going to come down to man on man. At some point, it's going to come down to guard your yard. Um, I had got eight stitches the game before. That's the thing where nobody number to talk about. They talk about me hitting him. What about me? I got eight stitches the game before. Took mine like a man, charged it to the game. Now, the next game, they hit my boy D-Wade. Mm. Now, you know I got to take care of my boy. Got to go out, take care of the franchise. But what I didn't like is once, ha- once Hansborough fouled D-Wade, a month in the Hansborough gave each other five right. immediately after. Yeah, was that was saying. the best part of that. Immediately crap. after they that. gave each other five. And at that time, I knew it was, at, I knew it was on. I knew it was on. So he was my bodyguard on and off the court. So, like me, I'm a nice guy, right? So I don't, I don't want to say I don't follow rules, but sometimes you don't know the rules. So I used to be in Miami in the wrong spot. <laughs> he used to come to the next day, practice, big fella, let me holler at you. You know you can't be down there in no convertible forever. I'm like where? He's like, so he would tell me stories. I'd be like, so like every time I was somewhere I, I wasn't supposed to be. The streets talk. Yeah, you did get me. Talk, man. Call so, me all the time. You are doing a podcast with your guy Mike Miller, the OGs, also on the Play Playmaker Network. Yes, and y'all yes, are so yes, awesome. Yes, OG. It's, it's amazing to be a part of it. But to that same Tyler Hansborough story, you said that our job is not to be the bully. We'll handle business when it comes to us, yes. but not to be the bully. Yes. And you were talking about Draymond Green, the same thing. Yes. But that seems to be your code. If you start business, I'm gonna finish it. I will finish yes, it. Sir. But you're not going to start it unprovoked. Nah, nah. I'm a daddy son. We don't start trouble. We just finish it. So for me, we're connectors. We connect the locker room. We connect the dots. We protect the guys that are in the locker room. We don't go out and we don't start it. We don't look for it. But we damn sure going to finish it. And I think where Draymond's gotten to the point where he's the initiator, um, and I think that's not a good thing. You know what I'm saying? I, I don't think – I just – when I saw the things that are happening, they kind of make me cringe because I put myself in that situation because I'm an OG and I'm a leader. So when I look at Draymond, I try to put myself in his shoes. I don't want to stand at the top and throw rocks. Right. I try to put myself in his shoes. And a lot of the decisions that he's making – it just makes me cringe because I can imagine myself the way he hit Jordan Poole, imagine myself hitting Tyler Hero like that. You know, these are the things that I put myself in his shoes yeah. and I try to understand where he's coming from and I can never do those things. Now, let me get, don't get me wrong, I talk to my therapist, but everything he can't help me with. Some decisions I got to make on my own as a man. Yeah, You know what I'm saying? And I think that's where it comes with Draymond. He's not coming some to practice of, with Yeah, him. some of this, you can go pay this man a thousand million trillion dollars as you want for three weeks, but when you get back in that gym, you got to make decisions. Mm. Yeah, that's up to you. And Nobody can help you with that. The Big Podcast with Shaq is presented by The General. You know Shaq loves The General, been with him his whole life. And The General is here to help you out as well. They offer flexible payment plans, the ability to pick your due date, low rates, and low down payments. The General has been offering quality coverage for 60 years. So just head to thegeneral.com to get a quote. You know the jingle, don't even got to say it. And it wouldn't be The Big Podcast if it wasn't presented by The General. Based on how he's talking right now, this is why I'm so big on the others. Because, you know, we live in a world to where they pick their favorites. Yeah. And I've always been a favorite, but I'm, I'm always fair. As a man, I can't walk around and, and be like, I built this by myself because it's not true. That's why I always shout out to Rick Foxes, who was my enforcer in L.A., the big shot Bobs, the two and three series hit three big shots. He don't hit those shots. I probably only have one ring. Mm. Derek Fisher. UD, Posey, Antoine Walker, because these are the guys that keep it together. <clears throat> they're, they're the ones that when we don't act right, they get in trouble. Because Pat used to be able to run suicide. I'm like, I ain't running no he motherfucking lying. suicides. This is what no I've suicide. heard these stories from run, him. I'm not running no suicides, no. So then they take it out on them guys because yeah. they kind of can't do anything to us until. He uh, lying. So Dwayne, Dwayne goes in the Hall of Fame, and he's one of the greatest Heat ever. To me, you are Mr. Heat, 20 years, all the same franchise. All now you're VP, VP of Basketball Development. When she, hold Heat on, hold culture. On. Hold on. Dun, 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 dun. That's their presidential music. Dun, 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 dun. There's a story behind that. Was, was Heat culture a thing when Shaq got there, or was oh, yeah. it still being built? No, hell no. It was a thing. No, I used to be about them strength, condi- I mean, the conditioning test and the body fat. Oh, it's I've heard about the, the oiled up bodies. <laughs> Listen, let me tell you something. Only about 5% of the league, I get, I'd say maybe 10% of the league could survive in Heat culture. 45 going to bail out because they got to sacrifice, and the other 45 going to bail out because they got to do the hard shit every time. So that only leads 10% that's made for Heat culture. Mm. 
And so when he, when you heard he was coming, I think it was like July, 2004, in your mind, before you met him or saw him, did you go, oh, Shaq could make his way into heat culture? No, nah, the first thing I thought about was I got to step my game up. You know what I'm saying? He ain't coming here to, can I cut? Yeah, yeah, he ain't coming here to fuck around. He coming here to win. You know what I'm saying? The expectation is winning. You know what I'm saying? When you bring a guy like Big Fella in. So yeah. I can't fuck around. I got to be on my shit. The second thing I thought of, it was an article that came out. Um, and I love this guy because he a Miami dude, but Dan Lebertard, he tried it. He said, Shaquille O'Neal has never won a championship with a power forward next to him at the size of 6'7", as Udonis has him. So now I'm looking at Travis Knight, who he played with. And no disrespect to Travis Knight, but even at 6'7", I tell Travis Knight ass up. So you go tell me he could win with Travis Knight, but he can't win with me? Mm. Immediately it was on. I had so much I had so much motivation. I was inspired, and I was ready to help him get his championship. So the only thing, and I've never talked about this, but the only problem I had with heat culture is it wasn't developed yet. And, and, Listen to me. When you win, now you can say it works. So I'm coming from a place where I won three in a row, went there a fourth time and lost. So I'm my the culture that I I I have the blueprint for. I won four out of five. So why would I change that? Great point. Well, why would I change that? Like I understand three hour practices and all that, but hey, my guy let us practice an hour and a half, and it worked. My guy did this, my guy did that, so, but, you know, f certain people don't want to change, so that's, that's the only problem, sorry, <clears throat> that's the only problem I had with the heat culture, and I'm the type, if it ain't, if it ain't broke, I'm not trying to fix it. So yeah, what like, body fat did they want you to get down to? 12. And you were at? I'm at 15. He met so us in the middle, though. Impossible. He met us in the middle. Yeah, I met you, because see. That's the way he got, he met us in the middle. Because see, I'm the type, all that stuff matters, but I play for a higher cause. When I was 13 years old, my father told me, if you don't play well, the family don't eat. Mm. You know how much pressure that is? Mm. So when I play, my mama got a house that I got to play for. Mm. And then I use a lot of jealousy as motivation. Yes. Like if, if you're talking about this guy and you're not talking about me, that's automatic death for you. Mm. So a lot of times I wasn't up, but let's just say we playing against the me. I'm going at his ass. I'm going at the human's ass. So... <clears throat> He would always throw Alonzo Mourning in my face. And Alonzo Mourning is a specimen. Mm -hmm. He man doll. Yeah. <laughs> he meant like he, he, he was yeah. doing the dietitian no, working he, out stuff before it seemed I don't, like anything. I don't know what he's doing, but Pat, and, 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 and rightfully so, I need you to be like. You used to tease the man about yeah. being on steroids. You remember yeah. that? <laughs> you remember you teased the man, you used to come in there chewing up a bunch of uh, Flintstone vitamins, <laughs> yeah. so you had your steroid today. <laughs> you remember you used to do that? Yeah. I used to be like, I'm trying to get like that. You eat a bunch of Flintstone vitamins <laughs> and chew them up. So you had your body and vitamins a day, you tell me you had the steroids. But I used to, he used to be like, you need to be like this, you need to be like that. And so Pat was a stat guy, so I tricked him. I said, okay. So one day he came in the locker room and he <clears throat> embarrassed me. Oh, you fat, this, that, that. I had to pull it out. I was like, Pat. I said, I understand your guy's 6% body fat and this and that, but here are the numbers. Yes, he did. Since 1992, I've been averaging 37, yes, he did. 15, <laughs> and three blocks. <laughs> and then he finished it with, and that's why I went first and you went second. Yeah. Oh, they shit lit the fire. They started racing and shit, jumping jacks. Any kind of competition yeah. they could get into, it was on. You and Alonzo? Oh, yeah. man, they full yeah. out race. Yeah. Pew, 20 yard dash. Yeah. Motivation, though. Man, it was crazy. Then I told Pat, he got mad. I said, Pat, I don't eat salad. He said, what is that? I said, I'm the type to go to McDonald's, eat a motherfucking burger, and bust a motherfucker out. That, that's just how I am. So he said, all right, we're not going to go 12. We're going to go 15. But I had another secret that only UD know. So UD, like, I would always come and look for him. He knew like, with my own eyes. I'd be like, hey, UD. Oh, yeah. Big fella, we're doing a body fat. So I go and I get in the sauna. Not because I'm trying to lose extra pounds. I want to get really wet. <laughs> So then when I come out, I get the baby oil, and I put the baby oil on, and I'm like, okay, and I suck my stomach again. I'm like, all right, come on, Bill, and Bill be trying to squeeze, but hey, no, 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 so I can't squeeze, I can't squeeze. I say, hey, man, I just got out the sauna, so I would always pass, and that was my loophole. What was your body fat at that time? Oh, six, seven, this is yeah, a specimen. I stayed around eight, nine, yeah. seven, eight, seven. I'm at six and a half now. And so when you guys, you that, that, you know, I'm at six, maybe at six, yeah, I'm probably yeah, at yeah. six. Somewhere so six, you you are six, now? six and a half. Me? I'm like 21. I'm about probably about 14 plus three. 
Ain't none of it in his arms, I tell you that. Motherfucking jacked up. Yeah, yeah, upper body's great. Yeah, 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 ain't none of it in his arms. I got a question. When you announced retirement, what did you do the next day? How did it feel? Let me give you a story. So when I left the game, I did something I never did before. I went outside and picked the paper up and started talking to neighbors. No, seriously, because I had this surgery, right, and I thought I was coming back, but then I was like, I ain't got no fucking contract. I ain't even going nowhere. So I was just like, go outside and just looking for people to talk to. Alex, hey, what's up? Hey, Shaq, welcome for Steve, come over. The boat on the lake. Like, I was just, I was like super bored. They couldn't wait for you to invite them over. No, see, I was, I was like super bored, and I was going to just take a year off, and then I got the call from TNT, but I don't know what I would have did if I wouldn't have got that call from TNT. I was like really super bored and just doing stuff I had never done. I got young boys, man. So I got you know a sixteen year old and a twelve year old. My sixteen year old play baseball at American Heritage, and uh, my twelve year old play basketball at Florida Christian. So immediately after the season was over, I dove into their summer. If anybody know about this AAU and travel baseball and perfect competition and all that shit, they playing seven days a week and twice on Sunday all around the world. So you know, I want to dive in with them and make sure that they get the things done that they needed to get done. I'm up in the morning going to the gym with my son playing basketball. I'm in the batting cage. I got a batting cage at the crib, so we in the batting cage in the afternoon. I'm doing everything I can with them. And then I realized my goddamn whole summer was gone. Then I was mad. Mm. <laughs> so what I will say is time management. We used to people managing our time. You tell us when we got to be at practice. You tell us when we got to be to the plane. And then after that, we do what we got. We do our own shit. Now our whole schedule is up to us. So I did the opposite of you. You know what I'm saying? Instead of going out to get the paper, I tried to get involved in a lot of things that my kids were doing and fucked around and I ain't had no time for myself. I want to give kudos to Miami Heat because you, you are the Miami Heat. They talk about Zoe and all that, but you, you are definitely the Miami Heat. When they gave you that job, the vice president of basketball development, I was happy for you. I appreciate uh, that. My question and, is. And, I, and the text, too. Thank you. Yes. And um, my question is, were you expecting that? And are you ready for that? Um, I wasn't expecting to necessarily have that particular role. But I knew I would be connected to the organization. And I knew it would be in some form of fashion of influencing the next generation and staying connected to the younger guys and, and the future of the organization. I think, you know, what people have to understand about the Miami Heat is the superpower is not the talent. The superpower is the connection. The superpower is the locker room. The superpower is the time that we spend off the court together, getting to know each other's families. When these guys come in this organization, it's one thing to say, hey, do this. It's another thing to spend time with these guys, get to know their families, hang out with them in the summer, go to dinner, and then when they come to practice, say, hey, I need you to do this. Now you've already been equity with these dudes. So I'm the guy that's gonna spend time with you. I'm the guy that's gonna get to know you. I'm the guy that's gonna figure out how to push your button so we can get the best version out of you. And then I'm gonna direct exposed message to you. We had so much fun in Miami, we had curfew. Is that not common? Uh, it's, uh, bro. <laughs> Is this heat culture we that we don't know? We earned curfew. Listen. <laughs> we earned that curfew. We earned that curfew. I used to tell my coaches, hey, man, I'm a grown damn man. I, you can't give me curfew. So There's Four parties in every city. All yeah. right, so you don't, party, you don't need to tell party. me any of the details. No, I know the statute them, of limitations. I don't yeah, get them in trouble. No, no it's but not Can you a, just paint the picture of a room that you walked into where you no, saw Shaq no, and no. you went, this is ridiculous? No, it wasn't like that. No, okay, no, okay. Let me that. So, I'm just saying like, he could have been like hey, on a table or something like that. No, no, no. Relax. First of all, I, I, I never DJing. Did, I never did that in public. <laughs> Let's just get that. In public. I'd have got the hell out of that room. That. He get no, on the table, I'm gone. They used to call us the Heatles. Yeah. Because it was a side business. Yes. Hey, man, give you $100, $250 to show up at a party. So when we go into these cities, I'm not just going to go sit in a room. I got to go. I got to go have fun. Mm. And it was my job to make sure everybody, because mm -hmm. I don't drink. But you get other people drinks. No, well, it's not that. It's just I let people do what they do. And it, like you said, time management. So we playing, we playing the Rockets. I got to go to work. He can chill. So if you want to have a good time in Houston, y'all go ahead. Like, like we we'd always did that. Like, so my job to just boom, bam. And we always got in by two. And then, you know, so two, shoot around at 10, come back and take another nap. But that kept us close together. You saw how you mentioned we hung out together? Yeah. It's yeah. very important. 
You hang out together. We we so it was we we was always together. Is that the city. partnership with the others, where when it, yeah. you go out, they become the stars, and you take the back seat, and then the next day at the game, you well, take over? Like even though I am a star, I never treated them like I was a star, and that's how you gain their respect. Yeah. Like you know, I don't. I never. I'm I'm doing this and doing that. You always gotta treat everybody equal. But again, since I'm not a drinker, yeah, and the party's in my name, some shit gonna go down. I'm going to be in trouble anyway. So, you know, a lot of guys may not have this opportunity to have a party in every city. Yeah, he did. Every city. I'm sure he did. Sacramento. He ain't lying. Sacramento, he is a, not a party lying. in every city. He and then, not lying. And then when we get back to the Utah, crib. Utah, Salt Lake City? Yes, and then when we Utah, get back to the Salt crib. Salt Lake City, wow. yes. Then we get back to the crib. You got mansions. You got live. You got problems. Like, it's just, yeah. it was just a constant party. So, then was the days. Speaking of stars, I had heard a rumor, and I kind of want to know your perspective. 2010, LeBron comes. You guys start nine and eight, mm-hmm. and then you guys go and win 21 of your next 22. Mm-hmm. I know that there was a lot of drama going on, mm-hmm. and I had heard a rumor that you were the one that kind of set the tone in the locker room. Of course he did. That what was happening before was not acceptable. Of course he did. And I'm just curious if you could enlighten us on what happened. Uh, I probably tore up some shit in the locker room. Um, I've been known to throw a few things from time to time. Um, but I think one thing about me is what everybody got to understand is, man, I'm obsessed with winning. Like, I don't, I can't really deal with mediocrity. You know what I'm saying? I can't really deal with not giving my best and not doing my best. You know what I'm saying? So watching that team that we had went out and put together and I had sacrificed millions. You know how hard it is to make millions up out here? Mm. I had sacrificed millions to be a part of that team. Um, yeah, I took it personal. You know, I took it to heart. And then when you think of a situation where, like Shaq said, it's going to be the other guys. You know what I'm saying? We had the big three, LeBron, Dwayne, you know, Chris. But if, if we didn't get it done, it's going to be how can we put better pieces around those guys? It's never going to be the particular situation that those guys didn't get it done. It's like, how can we find other guys to put around those guys? So when those guys weren't bringing their A games, I was very honest. Hey man, tighten that shit up because you're not coming out. It's going to be me that's going to come out. Right. <laughs> you right. Gonna come, so, you going to play your 42 minutes. I'm going to come out because you fucking up. It's just, you don't see a lot of guys, man, that can step to a, a LeBron, can step to a Shaq, can step to a Jimmy Butler when he yeah, goes at Spo, yeah, but it's but done use, correctly. Yeah, but you're using the wrong terms. Step to. It's about respect. How many arguments me and you got to? A yeah. few. Yeah. A few. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it's, but the respect will never be broken. My best friends, we argue, we fight. Yes. So we, when, when we used to fight, but not really fight, it's him being truthful. Like He always used to be like, come on, big fella, you out there bullshit. But, so my father told me a long time ago, listen to what I say, not how I say it. Mm-hmm. But when you checking me, that's when I respect you more. Mm. Only if I respect you back, though. So he, it wasn't, hey, big fella, you out here bullshit. It's, hey, big fella, you out there bullshit. Come on now. And, and like, you, you like, needed that sometime. And that's when I really started liking him because Rick Fox and Robert Ory and B. Shaw did that for me in L.A. Mm. They was the one that kept me in check. So when he started doing that first, I was like, you know what? I like this kid right here. I really do like The this confidence kid. that he instilled in us. A guy like myself, undrafted, Dwayne. Um, we were young, man. We didn't know what we were in for. We didn't know anything about being champions or winning championships. But there's this thing that they say, being a champion before you become a champion. There was a lot of things we learned about that before we actually had the opportunity came to become in champions. saying you guys can be champs. Yes, yes, oh, yeah. yes. And they, did I, did I, tell, I tell them everything, what else you told us? You don't remember that? No, what? You told me and Dwayne, if we win, what you was going to do? I said, get you a what? You said you was going to buy us Bentleys. The man told me and Dwayne, if we win our first championship, he said, if we win this title, I'm going to buy y'all Bentleys. The man ain't bought us no Bentleys. We was motivated as hell, but what me and Dwayne did is go and buy our own Bentleys. <laughs> where you live at? Big, you said you was going to buy us Bentleys. Hold on, where you live at? I'm in Southwest Ranches. I thought you lived in Mar- Miramar. Hold, hold on, <laughs> Kenny. That Bentley we had dropped off in Miramar in 2006. Cole, let's see what that the thing is. So wait, was there a part Bentley. of you, though, that like during the finals looked over at Dwayne like, yo, we going to get some Hell Bentleys? Yeah. No, 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 because you know why? Yeah. Because when, when, when all my Lakers teams win, we were, we were bragging about what I did for them. So they knew it was a possibility I was going to do yeah, that. We damn sure, we, we believe. We was young. We ain't know no damn better. He said, what? Bentley? Shh, let's go. All right, now that we're all, all acquainted, back to that ring of honor. What does that mean? Are, are, are they retiring your jersey? Yes. Oh, okay, okay. Every time I oh, okay, all right, okay. I got a kid from Miami, man. Okay. I can't okay. complain, man. Yeah, that, that's. 
I can't. No one can wear 40 again? No. And they should. Can I tell you the story behind number 40? 100%. So, there's an original Mr. Miami from Liberty City, from my hood, played for University of Miami, Tim James. He's like, he's the Miami version of them. He's the Miami version of Pee Wee Kirkland. He's a legend in the city of Miami. He was the original to get drafted from the University of Miami to the Miami Heat. He wore number 40 first. Mm. Also, my father, who passed away, late great father, wore number 40. So, it's in a lot of people call me the original Mr. Miami to play for the Miami Heat, but people don't know the history. There's another guy that got drafted from the University of Miami, from my hood, from Liberty City, wore number 40, played for the Heat. So, I always shout out Tim James. And do you feel like you've taken that legacy and cemented it now that no one else can touch it? Yeah, I think so. I think so. I mean, uh, yeah. you know, that was never the goal, but yeah, I think so. Speaking of jerseys in Miami, I hate the fact. I hate the fact that they hang up other people's jerseys. Yeah, which ones are the ones that upset you the most? Anybody. Cause you Non-heat know, jerseys. Cause I, I hope I'm not disrespecting anybody by this term, but you know I watch a lot of movies, right? This thing of ours, this is what we built. Yes. Michael Jordan ain't never played for the Heat. Bill Russell ain't never played for the Heat. Yes. I got to agree with him. You did your own thing with your little Celtics family, your Chicago family, but this Miami thing. Mm. And I was one of the original championship families. I lived on Star Island. I had the big house on Star Island. Then something happened where they thought I was assassinated, but I, I wasn't. I ended up in the desert in Phoenix and tried to make a comeback, but it was too late. So this, this is our thing. So I, I, I don't like that personally. I'm not trying to be disrespectful. I'm really good friends with the Arisons, and you know, me and Pat, we're, we're having a better relationship, but I, I never did like that. I mean, as, but, a, as a team leader, as a competitor, I'm going to say whatever I got to say to make you not like the other side. And then when it's Boston, I'm going to say more than whatever I got to say to not like you, to make you like the other side. Because when you walk in that arena, the things they say to you, I ain't, I'm from Liberty City. I ain't heard some of the shit that them people come out them people mouth out there in Boston. Mm. I've never heard it before. Right. All the respect for Bill Russell. All the respect it's for Bill the Russell. the fact that it's a Celtics I, Listen, I love Bill Russell and what he means to the game of basketball. But not up in here. Mm. Not up in here. Y'all two think y'all slick. We've been here an hour and y'all, and y'all haven't said the name. What name? W- what about Draymond? What about Draymond? What about Draymond? You tell me. You tell me your opinion. He tripping. We really? like, He tripping. We brought it up earlier. Nah, but I, I want to. I, I want to hear some some guys. Well, the problem is, I, ain't it's no it's no me and you's or Kenya Martin's or or, or Ron Artest. He wouldn't do no shit like that. To a you. lot of international guys. He wouldn't do that. I'm to not me. talking about that. I'm I'm saying I have a problem when they say he needs help. Nah. Nah, he's, I, he, he I actually agree smarter than the very average bear. Much with what you're he about. actually smarter than the average bear. That bothers me. It because, seems like a cop. But not only cop, but it's just if we don't say it, it shouldn't go viral, right? We, this thing of ours, like you got a lot of people, and you're, you're not in that position, but you are. But you're well respected. You're like you're like an earnest fraternity. People love you. You don't have no enemies. But a lot of these guys just be saying, so he needs help. When you say he needs help, that makes it seem like he's, he's crazy off the court. We're all different people on the court. I will knock your fucking teeth out your mouth on the court. Off the court, I'm not about to get in that lawsuit. Yes. <laughs> I'm, not about to, I'm not about to have those problems. But on the court, that's how I am. And then this is how he's been the whole time. The man has, I think I sent you the clip. The man has... 20 ejections. I'm at 16. Do I need help? <laughs> Actually, I do need help. I need help filling up this goddamn hookah bar that I built. <laughs> do I need help? Yeah, I need help uh, running my Krispy Kreme and my big chickens. So when you put the narrative out that he needs help, you're making the man look crazy. Yeah. And the man's not crazy. He's very he intelligent. No, off the court, he's great. And then, you know, what I don't like about the situation, four years ago when y'all was, oh, oh my God, he's, he's so undersized, he's so tough, look at his toughness, he's throwing people around, he's not letting people, it was okay. It was okay. But now, since they're not winning and he's losing, now he needs help. One thing I want to do with you a lot is what would Shaq do? And I'm just curious if you were Nurkic or you were Gobert. He wouldn't have did that to me, let me tell you why. Not on no bully thing. I'm not going to have my hands on him way out there like that. I'm not going I'm not going to be trying to cuz listen, he was trying to flail, was trying to get the call. That's what he does. He's trying to get the call. And the only mistake he made is he had his hands out like that. 
If I have my hands out like this right now, I'm going to hit you. If I go like this, I'm not going to hit you. That's the only mistake he made. But guess what? He's been doing that the whole time, his whole career. So does he need help? No. This is how he has to play. He had to play a certain way. You look at him, no disrespect. He's not a big guy, but he, he's six, eight. Oh. People disrespect him. I'm fueled by hate. To get that, I'll tell you right now, yeah, I'm going to so, hate the other side. I'm yeah, fueled. That's my fuel. I don't like you. Fuck you and the horse you rode in on. Yeah. That is my fuel for everybody we play against. And if I can get the other 15 guys in my locker room to feel like me, then we, have, we got the competitive advantage. And that's the only problem I have. He needs help. Like, stop. He don't need no help. Like, bro, he's been doing this the whole time. Rashid is leading with, I think, 29. Draymond, 20. I'm at 16. Me and DeMarcus Cousins got 16 ejections. So, am I crazy? Do no, I need I, help? I, to like what you're saying, I do think it seems like when we don't know what to say, what the media, when they don't know what to say, they say, I really hope his mentals are okay and he gets the help he needs. You know, Which to me is like, no, we need to have a real conversation about what he's doing and not just hide behind that. I agree with you. I mean, because when they said that, I, I went I went searching. Like, has a man had a problem with his family? Or the man, like, the man's a model citizen. Model. Every time I see him in the back, he's hugging his daughters like he should. He's a father. So, you know, there was times where I would come home and be like, hey, not, not, not today. Dude, I've heard Gary yeah. Payton talk about you on the court versus off the court. It's different, different people. There's yeah. different people. I'm sure yeah. off the court, your family would not even understand the way that you would act on the court or the things that you would say. And then you're going to get all these people with, with non G14 classification who I don't listen to, but I'm not sticking up for nobody. But I'm just saying, I, I, I ain't going to just let y'all ruin the man because y'all don't understand the man. I understand the man. You got to play a certain way. Let me, let, me, let me tell you something. He knows this because every now and then when I shoot my fade away because I want to be like Duncan or Garnett, he'd be like, hey, big, big fella, fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah. Fuck all that. So, like, but I, I never wanted to be bully all the time. I wanted to bring it down. Throw, like I, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do to win. So I had to knock people's teeth out their mouth and intimidate. When I've turned, I'm looking for the offensive foul because if you want to play tough and be all strong, I'm knocking your teeth out your mouth because I'm guaranteeing you can't take it twice. I'm guaranteeing you can't take it twice. It's a way to get somebody back out there. If you, if you wanna if you wanna get one off, it's a way to get one off and and and, and not hurt somebody. Super Pause. Oh, God damn. Come on now, we don't play. Got that. him one to nothing. I don't, I don't know about that. I, I don't know how to play that game. Um, but if you wanna, if we all know, if you wanna retaliate or if you wanna get a sneaky yeah. you know, shot in, it's a way to do it without making it for the cameras, for TNT, without That's getting thrown out, without hidden. getting suspended. Like you, you know don't who have, I'm at. It doesn't have to go that far. You know who I'm at. at? What's his name? N N N Nurkic? I'm, I'm mad Saying at him. get him some help? No. I'm mad because you're ruining what I created, the, the Big Man Alliance. You don't let no little man hit you. Mm. Your first reaction shouldn't be, uh, your first reaction be like, we fighting. Even if you don't want to fight, act like you want to fight. <laughs> like, bro, we all been hit in the face before. So come all that uh, laying on the ground, you, you, make it, you making me look bad. That's what I'm about. You need help. Get your big ass up and fight. How about that? I and follow someone on Instagram that? who doesn't follow me, but it's okay. Uh, his name's Shaq. Uh, and I don't follow hey, anybody. Yeah, okay. But anyway, he posted a picture. I guess somebody else, because Shaq loves posting this. And it was a picture of Chet and Victor Wembanyama, and it was, these are the big men today. Let me ask you, D. What would Shaq's stat line be if he was up against Chet, who is phenomenal? Don't, don't do that. He's really good. Don't do okay, that. Fine. See, How would it be see, against Chet or do Victor? Not do what that. that line bit? Do not. I, I mean, he would I hate when y'all do that. I mean, Which part? The saying he's great? No, y'all th throwing around words that we had to work hard for. Phenomenal okay, is not the right really word. He's really promising. Thank you. He's good, but don't be going promising yeah, he the and other great night. and future Hall of Famer. I'm not saying that. You know what? Starting but the day. Shaq hold against on. the Chet Holmgren. Starting the day, I'm putting it into all that shit. I am. Starting today. Can't like, say the word great. No, y'all can't. Y'all can't just be giving the, giving these people things who ain't putting on no work. Like can't his body of work. Goats. Yes, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So like, it, phenomenal is the wrong word. All right. And Promise. you can't use dominant unless he does it for a consistent a consistent amount of time. Okay. I'm not talking two or three games. I'm talking years. Yeah, good point. Years. But Shaq against the modern day center. I mean, they couldn't guard him. They couldn't guard him. He would dominate him. Obviously, in the post, you know, when he gets the ball, I mean, say what your chest you did. These guys straight up and down like six o'clock. Like, what are they gonna do with Big Phil? Um, 
But on the other end, big fella, you got to get out and hedge on them screens. <laughs> oh yeah, you know. Get back. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. They gonna have some open to hedge on them screens and get back to these guys now. <laughs> he gonna have a, you know what I'm saying. Now they can't guard him, but on the other end, he gonna have to hedge on them screens and get back. I'm, I'm not you doing have to none of that. Out, man, yeah, I'm, I'm not doing none of that. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I I I, I, I love. One time in practice, we had like this show drill, like for three hours. And UD got back. Shaq, big ass, ain't show. So why the fuck I got? <laughs> I got to do because I got to show and get back to my man, and he don't have to show and get back to his man. That's a low story. All right, so this is technically our New Year's episode, and I'm curious: Have you guys ever made New Year's resolutions? And have you ever made one and then not followed through for like years upon yes. years? All the time. Yeah, I so always my, had a New Year's resolution. I don't never get to them. What's your body about? Right now, about six, six and a half. All right. Man. If I don't, if I don't pull my shirt off March six on my birthday and show people how sexy I am, I'll give you ten thousand. So you just have to pull off your shirt. Do you have to have abs, or you're just you have to take off your no, shirt? No, no. Well, I would like to have abs, but I, I want to be. Uh, so my New Year's resolution is. To be chiseled up. I want to do a Thought Daddy Thursday every day. This man said Thought Daddy Thought Thursday. Daddy. Thought man, Daddy what Thursday. You that? Come no, on. No, I do. I want to just, you know, be oiled up, sitting Come in the hookah on, bar man. with the boom, boom, boom. So, oiled up like you're going for the body fat. My New Year's fine. resolution that if I'm not chiseled up by March 6th, I'm going to give you 10000 to any charity you want. Beautiful. All right. And what has your and I want people resolutions? And I want people out there to remind me and challenge me. Cause I'm gonna start not my Daddy Thursday challenge. Yes, you know, I, don't, I don't know what that's gonna be like. What resolutions have you not followed through? Mine is like abs too. I've been trying to get yeah, abs been, for twenty years. Not a thing. You know what it is? I'm goddamn Oreos. Dude, they're so good. I've been trying to give up cussing for years. Oh, there's no chance. I've been trying to give up cussing for there's years. No that's been my thing. New Year's resolution every New Year. As there's soon no as the clock hits twelve, I cuss. There's no such thing. One out of five. We were two five minutes into the spot, and he goes, "Can I cuss?" <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's a thing. That's my thing for New Year's. Every New Year, and that's What's why I say I never do it. What's your favorite word? Shit, damn, motherfucker. Oh, <laughs> just put them all together. <laughs> hey, Swade. Hey, Swade, the remix guy. I'm going to need you to hook that up for me. <laughs> that's it. That's my, that's, that's my favorite. And then my follow-up for that would be, what NBA player do you think you've cussed out the most? Oh, man. Me? Me? Probably yeah. definitely Shaq. No, there was someone else that you thought of. Probably. No, I was going to say me. Dwayne and Shaq. Really? Yeah, yeah I used to get me and the Dwayne. Teammates get it worse. Yeah, me and yeah, Dwayne used to cuss at each other all the goddamn all the time. time. But again, that's respect. Yeah. Mm. Because we both want the same thing. And I know I can touch, I know how to, I know how to push these guys' button and motivate these guys. We speak the same language. Everybody don't speak that language. Some guys I can't talk to like that. Right. That don't work for everybody. At all. I can talk to those guys like that. All right, so because this is the New Year's episode, uh, we got to look at the New Year's games. So this is Who You Wit, presented by the General Insurance. You already know it. What do you know about the General? I know a lot about the General. Iconic Shaq commercials. I love the General Insurance commercials. So you know why I'm with the General? Because you had it when you couldn't afford car insurance. Yes. And that's why. Uh, New and, Year's but, games. And I, I got tired of hearing the song. So he's a witness. We got another witness. Every morning at 10 a.m., we wake up with thousands of dollars, and we watch the Maury Povich show. And we make bets on who the father is. That that, that was my Andrew. Thing. You are not the yes, father. Every day and thing. So like we watch wow. it, we let them talk, and then we pause, and then we pull that money. I'm, I bet you a thousand not the father. So that was my thing. So the general was look a commercial. Look at his ears. Look at his yes, ears. Yes. So every morning for years, and then that damn jingle used to come off. Oh, great little race. So I've always had it in my head. So when my guy he came to the office one day, he said, "Hey man, the general insurance want to holler at you." I was like, "The general insurance." And then I said, I said, Kenny, go to my go to, go to my thing and, and, and you know look at all the papers and damn sure I had it in college. So when I wanted to meet with them, I wanted to tell them the story because I don't like just taking people's money if I don't have any affiliation with them. And they was offering a lot of money, so yeah. respectfully, I wanted to go tell them, hey, I like you guys, but this is not so because I had a story. It was a perfect fit, and I, I always tell people, and, and I was telling him, it's not about the deals; it's about the renewals. Because anybody can get a deal, but if you keep getting renewals at the renewals, it just shows that, that, that your, your, your team is professional, their team is professional, and the relationship is great. So I've had nine renewals with the wow. general insurance. First one, Timberwolves, Knicks. Uh, ain't nobody watching that. I'm going with Timberwolves, man. Ain't nobody Ant -Man, watching Ant -Man, that. Ant -Man really good. Balling. I, I, leadership. Hey, I'm, I'm a groupie. Yeah? I like Ant-Man. I do. 
However, he's he's in he's he's in a fraternity. He ain't crossed yet. No disrespect to him. I love him. But is it playoff um, success that gets him that? No, G14? it's not that. I'm just saying New Year's, bro. Family getting so ready. So my for question was going to be: uh, I'm not going to waste that's no Minnesota time. Minnesota in New York for New Year's. Do I like? And it's the early game. I'm kind of worried about a young Timberwolves team in. Uh, New how York. early? How, how early is the game? Probably be like early afternoon. Like okay, between. so okay, so if it's one o'clock, I'll just be getting up. I may watch it, but it's not going to be <laughs> something that I'm, I'm rushing to. No, real talk. Like, come on, bro. Like, and and, and and you know what's crazy? Like, a lot of people try to test me on my basketball history. If you wasn't one of the top teams, I don't know who you are. Mm. Well, well you're going to love this one because okay. the second game is Pacers at Bucks. And we just saw the game ball fiasco with Giannis. So, if my betting, what my bet would be on this game would be Giannis points. He is averaging against the Pacers this year. 52 points man, come on, man. in three games against come the Pacers. On, and what time is that game? That, that'll be around like that 2, 3 o'clock. Okay, so just be getting up, just be eating breakfast. May work out. Actually, I got to work out because I just got there. So I'm going to work out, and I'm going to watch that game. Let me tell you why. Giannis, Dame, great players, much CTV, the fiasco that went on. I'm watching for a different reason. Hey, Pacers, you little punks, you going to let that motherfucker get 64? Mm-hmm. Or, 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 or. He said hey. 64, 54, and 37. So, hey, hey, Milwaukee, they took your game ball. What you going to do? Like, I want to see if well, it's going to be some competition. So, I, you said before, don't call young guys great until they do it. I agree. I think we have another problem in media is when we talk about rivalries when not enough has happened yet. Oh, yeah. Like, the way you talked yeah. about Boston, yeah. that's a rivalry. Yeah. Could Milwaukee, Indiana no. turn nah. into? No. no. Nah. Okay. But yeah. I, do, I do like Halliburton. And let me okay. tell you why. He competes. So when we were out there a couple of weeks ago, uh, when uh, New the Orleans season tournament of the season tournament, when New Orleans was getting ready to play Lakers, and my guys Kenny and Jerome tell me, I got to stop doing this shit. I put myself in a position. So I'm saying we out here, and it's LeBron, 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 LeBron. I'm thinking like, what, Zion, what you gonna do? Like, like this is okay. You, you the king, but at some point the king gotta go. Because guess what? The king got the kingdom. He got all this. I want all that shit. So I'm thinking that's how he would think. And then he, the man went out there. And, and then I was very careful. When I criticized him, I wanted to criticize him with facts. Because when I criticized my you brought a paper and everything. When I criticize my people, I'm also teaching. If I don't like you, you'll know I don't like you. But I'm not going to use this to say I don't like you. I'm going to holler at you. Mm. See what I'm saying? So I was saying... He didn't run hard, and, and I was there watching, right? He don't create easy points for himself, right? And everybody else, weight, this and weight, that. Yeah, Stephen A. went kind of crazy on the weight. I stayed away from that because they said I was fat too. But how I got out of that, I'm still dominating. I'm still getting 30. Yeah, like, Zion like, like was averaging Pat, 27 like and 10. We wouldn't be talking about Thank you. anything. And that's my whole point. I need him to do that. So now, oh, and then I hate when they say, well, what, what, what do you think of what Shaq and Charles said? Shaq ain't said nothing about your weight. Yeah. He ain't said nothing about your weight. But you, you could be as big as you want. If, you, if you're averaging what you're supposed to average, people are not going to have that conversation. So at some point, I got to stop thinking these guys would think how I would do. Because I remember when I was coming in, it was Mike, Charles, Kenny, and Pat. And I was just basic business. Like, when I first got into the shoe business, you ain't going to outsell Mike. But guess what? Put me next to him. Mm. First year I came in, I was like, no, nah, forget Mike. My shoes ain't sell shit. Second meeting, I was like, hey, can I, can I get right there? Mike going to be right there. But I'm like, can I get right there? Right there? So when you look, you can be like, oh, I like them drill. Oh, what's up, them shacks? Now, so when you get next to these people, that's your chance. You got to take them. But he, he didn't do that. And, and the fact that he didn't respond back, that just tells me he ain't ready. Mm. Get mad. Get mad. Them people call you fat. What you going to do about it? Shaq said you ain't working hard. What you going to do about it? The fact that you don't get mad shows me that you don't care. And this thing, you have to care. Because if you don't care, and listen, they giving that money away. Whew. I am so jealous. Said, of, bro, I am so jealous of these young athletes. I think for a, the first few years we worked together, you had a really hard time getting with over Rudy Gobert. Salary. No, no, yeah. with Rudy Gobert. When he got like two hundred million, <laughs> you better come back. Yeah. And, and so I made a comment a long time ago. Kids just follow Rudy Gobert. It's not that I'm dissing him. I'm saying 
Everybody want to be D-Wade. Everybody want to be Kobe. Everybody want to be LeBron. But this man works hard. He's averaging 9, 10, 12 points, and he makes 250. That's what I meant when I say follow him. But you deal with these earthlings. Who, like, you got to understand, when I don't like you, you'll know. And you're not going to know from here. I'm going to holler at you when I see you. Mm. I, don't, I, I don't need this to get at you. I don't need this to big myself up. This studio right here is sitting on how many acres, my boy? It was a lot. A lot. My driver got That's lost. A, that, yeah. So, like, I don't, I, I've never been like that. He yeah. knows, like, when I want to holler at you, I'm going to holler at you. Like, I used to tell him sometimes, like, hey, man, I'm about to knock his head off. Big fella, don't do that. We need you yeah, for next game. All right, yeah. third game is Hornets Nuggets. Not watching not it. Not a great that's game. The, that's the one they should have put at one. Jokic might go for <laughs> 50, 20, and 20. People just getting up. Yes, I, I, like, I like Jokic. He's man. in the big man lines, but I'm not watching that game. I mean, I uh, love Jokic, but no My bet on that one is Denver third quarter. What is it? Man, I've looked at some stats, UD. Some teams, the good teams, incredible in the third quarter. The bad teams get oblit. Is it you go into halftime and you guys look at each other and go, N enough of this funny business, we're taking care of it. Right? Like Charlotte is 1-10 in, in third quarters. I think they just can't maintain it. It just they falls yeah, off a cliff. Yeah, being able to maintain it for 48 minutes for an entire game, you know, it's not easy. Then you go in, you take your foot off the gas for, what, 10, 15 minutes, you're in the locker room. Yeah. Most of these guys, nine times out of ten, as soon as they walk in the locker the room, they check the damn phone. Do they what check the their phone in the heat locker room? Better not let us catch your ass. <laughs> you better not let us catch your ass. That's what you better not let us do. Yeah. <laughs> Most of these guys walk in the locker room, but they tap in and look at their phone, and immediately you've lost the, the you've lost the edge. Yeah. You've lost the edge, man. Yeah, Whatever edge you I, might I have, you've lost the edge. So there's like there's 48 minute teams, Black there's 40 Bear. minute teams, and then there's like 24 minute teams. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Last one Heat at Clippers. So the Clippers now are on a what roll. What time? What time? That's the prime time game. What time is that? That'll probably be like your nine ten Eastern. Oh game. no, definitely not watching that one. Because okay. you, you know why? Because you know why? Because we got to get ready for so the, the party. So the Clippers are on a roll. James Harden that. starting to click. I don't care about that. Westbrook on the bench is looking good. I don't care about that. Heat on the road in L.A. Heat. All heat. Heat. But see, you got you got to understand an organization like the Heatles. We know how to conduct ourselves in certain cities. So you try to, oh, it's LA. We don't care about it. We, we, know, we know how to do you it. You see how people are when they come to Miami. Yes. Ba ba based on what we put down, the manuals there, we, we know. How. Like, big cities never intimidate me. Like, when you go to New York, New York, you're not going to be out all goddamn night in New York anyway. You're going to be out an hour or two at the spot, and then you're going back to the room to watch movies and go to sleep. But you like the heat. I like the heat. Okay. I like the heat. I mean, you I ain't gonna never go against the heat. Yeah, never. Like but you know never. how I go. I mean, I'm loyal to the soil. Yeah. How the hell I I got to fly back to the 305 today? How the hell could I pick LA? There's no way. So when you go on NBA TV and you continue your TV career, do you think there will ever be a time where you don't pick the Heat to win a game? Never. Never. Even I'm if also gonna be, I'm also gonna be honest, if the Heat ain't doing their job, I'm gonna say that too. Okay. Yeah. yeah he ain't gonna never go against Heat. Yeah. I'm not gonna be. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, lie about it. You know what I'm saying? When is that jersey retirement? Because I want to make sure I'm there. Uh, January 6th, 16th, or somewhere around there. Yeah, I want to wow. make sure I'm there. January 19th. So, brother, I know you got to catch a flight. Uh, my condolences go out to you. I appreciate you, man. With your Thank mom, brother. You. They, she loved you. Yeah, they always, they always my parents. Yeah, yeah my always. My moms, my pops, who are not here today, but he was one of his. Thank you, man. Congratulations you. on getting your jersey retired. Thank you. Well deserved. And I'll see you. And We'll catch him on the OG's podcast. You sure will. Miller. OG's on podcast the Playmaker, with Playmaker. Big and fella. I, and I hopefully see you on TNT. My man. neighbor. I'm coming to your motherfucking house. The man stay. I'm in Southwest Ranches. You and Davey. I'm in Davey. No excuse. You got one of these down there? No. Dang. No. But he, might, still coming. but he might have your Bentley <laughs> down there. Coming. I don't. He might have I'm your Bentley coming. down there. I don't. You're right. He might have my Bentley. Or one that I can borrow. <laughs> All right. So we just talked to UD. I feel like UD is in your top five people that have G14 classification. I feel like he's up in the ranks of dudes you respect like that. So a lot of people don't know me and UD are the same people. What I mean by that, you look at me as a superstar, I wasn't always like that. I was them. So that's why I respect them so much. I'm not one of these superstars that forget. So like, I tell my sons this all the time. Life is like this. Right, you may be the man in high school, but when you go to college, you gotta start all over. So, in high school, I was the man. My first two years in college, I was UD, 
And then when Chris and Stanley left, I became the man again. When I first came in the, the NBA, I was Shaq, but only in Orlando. Mm. When I go to the All Star games, I couldn't get extra tickets. I, I couldn't say do this and do that. So I was UD. So I really love people like him and respect people like them. And I always tell them thank you because when I got double, I had to kick it out to him and Rick and Big Shot Bob. They had to make the shot. I could tell the one thing that you guys have in common, it takes very little to motivate you. And all it takes is one person to say something. That's it. And you will hold, it will burn a fire in you. Burn it because, you know why? Because because of the love for my mother and father. See, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a reformed bully. I only know one way. I used to punch people in their face, which you can't do that now in the corporate world. So, it, like you said, it burns inside me. It, yeah, I like could it imagine just, you at a Papa John's meeting. Like I hate when or people. Or pepperonis. Like I hate when people say he didn't work on his free throws. Like everybody said, I want to punch you in your fucking face. <laughs> Every time I had a bad game, I would come tear my house up and I would shoot a thousand free throws. Me and Kenny, me and Drew, eighty percent. At home. At home. And, and they would get mad because they seen my Steph Curry-like form. They would see it, and then when I get in the game, it wouldn't be there. They, they would I'd tell that. And just like, so, oh, he don't work on the game. Mm. Bro, I'm in the gym more than I am out on these streets. It just so. That's why, like, sometimes when I had to, like, buckle down and make it, the fact that I did practice, I could just, you know, tuck that elbow in the ones I needed. That's why I always said, Forget my percentage. Percentages. When I need to hit them, I'm gonna be there. Free throws in the clutch. The black Steph Curry, eighty-five percent. I just want to know what Steph Curry thinks about you calling yourself the black Steph Curry. <laughs> his mom said. His mom said, uh, "Steph's black too." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "You're right, mom." Such a mom thing. Yeah. All right, so New Year's 2023 coming to an end. Uh, and the viewers, listeners, we need to tell them the do's and don'ts of New Year's celebrations. And so I'm curious, do you have any words of wisdom for keeping people safe on yes. New Year's? The first thing you should always put in your head is be safe. Second thing you should always do is act out scenarios you know can happen. If I drink and drive, I don't want to tell you those scenarios. It's two that you, you don't want to be involved with. So be smart about that. I say have your Uber or your car service set out earlier. Mix in a water? Yeah, let's or just. five? No, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say that yet. I'm okay. just saying, I'm just going to, let's have the transportation. Like, this New Year's, I'm going crazy. I may I'm, I may take a couple of shots. You will? Yeah, but, but I already know I'm not driving. So I already got dot I set up. I got a show, right? I'm going to do my little show. I go on a 12 from 1 to 3. We probably go just smoke some hookah and relax. But how am I going to get home? Safety. Boom. Now, while you're doing these activities, you got to continue to be safe. Brothers, turn it off on New Year's. Okay? You dress up. You're there with your lady, with your boys. Don't be going to the club with animosity starting to fight. Somebody bump into you, just say, what's up, my boy? We're there to have a good time. Because I've seen a lot of things pop off on New Year's. So make sure you get home safe. Go into the club with a clear mind. And just do the right thing. I said, like, I'm, I'm not, man, 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 man. No, life is simple. Like, I'll, Leave that shit in 2023. Like, like for example, man, we about to go to the club. We know we'll go down to the club. So some drinking and that, and that. Okay, so now how are you going to get back from the club? Got to be safe. If I get stopped with the cops and get boom and get arrested, I'm losing my job. You don't want to do that. So set up some transportation. And when you're there with your boys, go in your section, mind your business. Don't be looking at people. Don't be looking at people, girls. Don't be disrespecting people. Stay in your section with your boys. Do your thing and get home safely. My my piece of advice would be, be with people that when the ball drops and everyone's like, 2024, that you want to be hanging out with in 2024. There's always that moment where like all the energy dies down and you look around and you're like, these same motherfuckers? Like, yeah. I got to be with them? <laughs> try and hang out with people that will uplift, like, try and make it a new thing. Don't be on your Good old point. stuff. Good point. Now, something we do every week, words of Shaxpiration where you give inspiration to our listeners. And again, you can email us. You could not email us. You could tweet at us or Instagram. Don't slide into Shaq's DMs. This comes from a listener, Dr. O'Neill. I have a son who has recovered physically from a knee injury, but is having mental issues with confidence and performing at the level he was before the injury. Can you give us some advice on how to overcome those mental hurdles? 
My advice to the young fella is things will be okay. You have to push. Now, when I say push, I don't mean a regular push. For example, if the doctor says, you do this rehab for three weeks, you'll be back to normal. So let's just say he says, you got to do like this one set. I'm doing five sets. Do five sets. Wait till he leave. When ain't nobody looking, do another set. Because we control our mentals. Mm. We can never let our mentals control us, which is very hard to do. A lot of times I go, I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm not there. I'm not there. And you start to believe it. But at some point you have to say, I'm going to get there. 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 I don't know what the D feels like. I almost did. When I was, uh, what? I don't like to say the word, depression. Okay. Well, because I was going to pause. I, right. The D. The D. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, go, we go were all it. thinking, nobody said it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, yeah, I hope you all know what it feels like. <laughs> You're right, but I, I don't know what it's. So, yeah, depression. I don't know what depression feels yeah. like, but I almost got there one day. Mm. When I stopped playing, I was like, because I. Because yeah, all said it I with knew, UD. you had no idea yeah, what to I, do. I, I didn't like. I didn't even have commercials set up. I was just, just doing stuff, and one phrase got me back out of it. One phrase. So my mom was asking me one day, "What's wrong?" I was like, "I don't know. I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing." And she looked at me and said, "It could be worse." And then that, that just put it in perspective. I was like, "You know what? I still got my house. Let me check this account." Oh yeah, I'm I'm good. I still I, let me check this garage. Uh, so it was like, so my thing was, why the fuck are you complaining? Mm. So I'm not saying this young guy's complaining, but my my, my answer to him to, to to get back to that is just stay focused, and you you always have to believe. You always have to believe, and you're not going to be at that point right away. No, you took a traumatic injury. You got to. You're at zero. Now you got to go to 40 and 50 and 60. And once you get to 100, you just got to keep it strong. So, And, and don't and, stop then either. And then mom has to encourage him, not baby him, and push him. When I was young and I would get hurt, my mom would be like, get up. My mom would twist my ankle. Nah, you still got to take that trash out. Like he, so I, I know he's your baby, but if you baby him, he's going to want to baby yourself. See, the good thing, the, like I have a lot of people that, that control the shack. The Sarge, Uncle Jerome, Uncle Mike, Ken Dog, Joe, Black, like we, they all kept Nobody me in line. Nobody lets you get soft. Yeah, no, they they also kept me in line. That's just how I can look at a lot of people and tell they ain't got no friends. Like Kanye ain't got no friends. No one's telling him to stop. No. Yeah. I think to your point and what you and Udonis were talking about earlier, like that doctor that you were saying do this five times, in my head I'd be like, he don't think I can do it 15. Exactly. Like I would almost turn him like I rem, like not to make a, I, when I was in, I was in Nebraska making 18,000 a year and my friends were in New York and LA. I thought you was getting ready to give me a skip Bayless moment. Oh, when I played. I was averaging 1.2 <laughs> yeah. points per game. No, no, but I was, I was there and I would literally be in the gym every day and I'd be like, they don't think I'm going to make it. Like they think that I'm going to be here the rest of my life. And you, and you, but then when I would see them, I'd have to like figure out a way to turn it off. Cause I didn't, cause those were the, like, when you go see your doctor, don't be angry at your doctor. But, but I look at some of these athletes and I could tell how they grew up. If you don't grow up like that, it's not something you could just add. If you've always been the guy. No, if you always been challenged and you got people pushing you. Like, I've always been underestimated. That's why I can always bounce back to greatness. Since this this high. So I, I can look at a guy, I can tell where, where they're from. Mm. And I can tell how their parents raised them. Just by mental fortitude and mental toughness. And to give our guy a last... You can start that now. Like, you can just decide right I don't think now, you can. I'm going to be that guy. I don't I'm think trying you to give can. positive thoughts. I, well, I, I may be wrong, but I don't think you can. Okay. Shaq is saying that can you, you can't. So use Shaq as your motivation. You can? Yeah, we're talking about the oh, kid. Oh, the kid. I'm sorry. Yeah. I thought you were talking about the professional player. Okay, no, say no, that no. again. Talk about this kid yeah. rehabbing from oh, his Oh, yeah. Knee. No, he, he can do it. Yeah. yeah he can do it. Uh, I, I thought you were talking about some of these guys making 50, 60 million. No, I'm not talking about Kanye. Okay, yeah. Yeah. 
He's like, <laughs> Sorry, kid. <laughs> yeah. Figure it out, kid. <laughs> kid, give up. <laughs> give up, kid. Yeah. That knee injury, you're never going to make yeah. it. <laughs> no, but you know what? That works. Yeah. No, like, my, my family always used that on me. Oh, it always worked. Like, like I'd be practicing. Be, All right, come on. No, let's practice them out. Like, you ain't going to make it. Damn. You're not, please, just play. No, you're not going to make it. Then they just leave me alone for a week. And then when they see me out there doing it by myself, then they would come back. It just hit me. I love it. Damn. Are you just real? Like, you just had that yeah. traumatic? Yeah, because that, that works for me. Like, like, when you tell me I can't do something, I won't sleep until I get it done. I don't think you can uh, DJ us out of this episode. You know what? Since I, I, I messed the mood up, I'm going to drop something because we need love. We do. I need love, so I'm going to drop a freestyle I did. Shout out to Ella Kujay. I sent them my song on Rock the Bells, so I need love. I'm sorry, kid. I'm sorry I gave you up and down advice, but just keep your head up. Or you ain't going to make it, whichever one you want to go to. Yeah. <laughs> Screwed. Uh, thank you all for tuning in, checking out the big podcast with Shaq. I'm Lefko. Uh, I want to give a shout out our producer Shane, our guy Antoine behind the, the cameras, making us look nice. Ian's going to be editing this together. Matt on the graphics. UD just coming through. Shout out to UD. Our first in studio guest in the um, Shahuka. Shahuka Lounge, Shahuka yes, Studios. Yes. Shahuka Studios. Um, and, and I want to say, now that we're wrapping up the year, I want to give a big shout out to you uh, for, for making my life great, always being a good friend, checking in on me as my family continues to grow. Um, and I would also say a credit to you for being as good as your reputation is. Sometimes you meet people and you go, man, they're kind of an asshole. Shag, you're a great guy. And so thank you for always bringing cheer. Thank you for always bringing I, love. I don't believe you just said that. Which part? I don't want people to know, bro. That you're actually a good guy? Yeah, I don't. I, don't I mean, other than the know. time that you spit in my face and you cursed yeah, me yeah, out that, you, you yeah, tried to hit on my wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, just, didn't far? do that. Yeah, you wouldn't yeah. do that? Yeah, okay. too far. Strike that from the tape. <laughs> Didn't happen. But no, I want to also thank you for being my partner, being a part of this. I want to thank Shane, uh, Ken Dog, my assistants. What's your name? I want to thank my good uh, friend Brandon. What's your name? Christine, the mark of the, the lady behind the saved us. Yes, a million dollars us. just now. Rihanna on the camera. And what's your name? And my boy Tony he, Antoine. Man, put some bass in your boy Tony. I'm not calling no other man Antoine. It's Tony. Yeah. <laughs> but no, just you know, for making it because this will be this will, like, and and I don't care about rankings, but. I'm going to use that to motivate. I, I see the rankings that come out. So I'm, Thank you to all the podcasts yeah. ahead of us for giving us motivation. That's it. I mean, you're screwed, but you're coming. we appreciate you. We're coming for you. Happy New Year from the Big Podcast. I want to do a Thought Daddy Thursday. <laughs>